Hello, this is James Corbett, CorbettReport.com. I've been told by a number of subscribers that last weekend's subscriber newsletter editorial was perhaps the most important thing that I have ever written, and they have asked me to share this more widely online. And in order to do so, a number of people have requested that I make a video version of this editorial, the only problem being that this is explicitly an epistle, literally written pen and paper, so it is not meant for this format, but I will do so, although I am loathe to make a video version of this, I will do so if only to increase the possibility that this digital message in a bottle will wash upon the shores of someone out there with ears to hear. If you would prefer to read the text of this letter rather than have it read to you, please follow the link in the show notes to the actual text itself. So this is a letter to the future dated April 11th, 2020. The lamps are going out all over Europe. We shall not see them lit again in our lifetime. World War I conspirator Edward Grey. I do not write these words for my contemporaries. We are the damned. It is our lot now to watch as the lamp of liberty is extinguished, our burden to bear witness to the final flickering of the flame of freedom. No, I don't write these words for my peers. I write them for those yet to come the inhabitants of that future dystopia whose birth pangs we are experiencing. The remnant of once free humanity who might, through some miracle I can't even imagine, come across this electronic message in a bottle. I know that it's almost hopeless, that the chance of these words surviving the coming internet purge are slim at best, that even if, against all odds, this message does wash up on your digital shores, the chance of these words being understood by you is even slimmer. Not because you don't understand English, but because you no longer use these words I'm writing. Freedom. Humanity. Individual. Still, I am here to record the end of an era, so I will press on in the hope against hope that someone, somewhere in that future digital dark age, will have eyes to see and ears to hear. The darkness is descending. Let there be no mistake, we all know this. We know what it means when 17 million Americans, a full 10% of the workforce, are added to the unemployment rolls in a mere three weeks. When they are joined by millions more newly unemployed ex-workers all around the globe. When modern day bread lines stretch for miles in the heart of America's once proud cities. When the phony baloney fiat funny money debt rises to over 24 trillion and the Fed's Sovietization of the economy is complete. We know what it means when police start shooting people dead for not wearing a mask. When drones police quarantines from the sky and robots police lockdowns on the ground. When governments admit to tracking every movement of every citizen and begin internal checkpoints where digital immunity passports determine who may pass and who must stay in their home. We know what it means when billionaires start telling us that only their new experimental mRNA vaccines will be able to release us from this nightmare, when they threaten to mark us with invisible ink tattoos to ID the vaccinated, when they tell us that we will not be able to buy or sell or participate in the economy until we can prove our immunity. It means that the corona world order has arrived. Oh, sure, some will still deny it, but they are only fooling themselves. They're afraid to admit that it's true. Many are still under the old conditioning that told them to bleat conspiracy theorist at anyone questioning authority. We have a name for that kind. Sheep. Or sometimes sheeple. The masses in our day are kept in the pen by jackbooted sheepdogs of the police state and led along by the political puppets who act as their shepherds. Occasionally a wise old timer in the flock cottons onto the game, but the shepherd has only ever fleeced the flock. So he resigns himself to his fate. Why struggle? It's mostly pointless. Never did the sheeple suspect that someday the shepherds would lead them to the slaughter. It is a term of derision, of course, sheeple. But I like to think that it doesn't just speak to our stupidity. It speaks to a naivety, an innocence. We are trusting and gentle creatures by nature, peaceable, cooperative. That is nothing to be scorned. If it weren't for the predators in our midst, our failings would be counted as virtues. But I'm not here to say that. 
I'm here to say this. Resist, struggle, fight. You are not cogs in a machine, despite what the shepherds of your day may be telling you. You are free and beautiful human beings. You are not born under the authority of another. You choose how to live your life, not some bureaucrat, not some police robot, not some immunity checkpoint algorithm or QR code. You do not need permission to buy or to sell or to assemble or to speak your mind or to leave your home. You are not an asymptomatic carrier of whatever virus your misleaders are telling you to be afraid of. You do not have to shelter in place because someone in a white lab coat told you to. I want you to understand that once upon a time, the government didn't have the right to know where you were, who you were meeting with, what you were purchasing, and what you were doing 24-7. Hell, the government didn't even have the ability to do that. I need you to know that there was a time when you could leave your house when you wanted, buy and sell as you saw fit, meet your neighbors, rally, protest, party, live as free human beings were meant to live. What am I saying? These words, this language, it makes no sense to you, does it? These concepts don't exist in your time, do they? You go where you are told to go. You stay home when you are told to stay home. You shut up when you are told to shut up. You think what you are told to think. You don't think what you are told to not think. I can't blame you after all. You're trusting and naive and peaceful, like a sheep. But oh, how I weep for what you have become. I tried to avert it. Please believe me, I really tried. But the lamp of liberty is being extinguished, and I am bearing witness. I don't know if history is something you study anymore, but in case it is not, UK Foreign Secretary Sir Edward Grey made his observation about the lamps going out all over Europe at the end of the so-called 12 days. According to the mainstream history books of our age, that was the period during the summer of 1914 that the British government was said to be trying to avert a world war. We are asked to believe that this prescient remark proved Gray to be a sage diplomat who was racked with grief over the pain and suffering that he sensed was about to be unleashed upon the world. But this is history by the winners of the worst kind. In truth, Gray was himself one of the conspirators who were actively working to bring about the First World War. What's more, the source of this quotation is in fact Gray himself. It was first recorded in Gray's own post-war memoir, any tears he may have shed over the snuffing out of those lamps were crocodile tears, to be sure. One can well imagine that the history books of your era will record that Bill Gates made a similarly portentous remark at the onset of this corona crisis. Gazing out the window of his $127.5 million, 66,000 square foot Xanadu 2.0 mansion in Washington state, the then epicenter of the U.S. outbreak. Gates' post-coronavirus memoir will no doubt tell us that he remarked to an underling, the lights are going out all across the globe. We shall not see them lit again in our lifetime. But his memoir will no doubt fail to inform us that he was smirking as he said it. To my children, or my children's children, or whatever remnants of once free humanity happens to unearth these words in that godforsaken future we are all goose-stepping into, I'm sorry. I failed you. We all failed you. But remember this. As long as the blood of your forebears flows through your veins, the lamp of human freedom shall not be extinguished forever. Let it shine, dear sheep. Let it shine.